Okay, uh, so today we're going to look at uh, the final chapter, chapter 10 on efficient learning. Um, before we get started, I did want to clarify that uh, next week, uh, Colin Gillespie, he's one of the two authors of the book, uh, he's agreed to come uh, talk to us um, to answer any questions we have, and I'm going to try to encourage him to ask us any questions he has, because I think they do plan to, um, or at least they're considering making a new edition of the book, and so be ready to answer questions about what you thought. Um, but yeah, I'll... Uh, I'll try to get a like a Google form up or something, but generally, the general idea will be try, I'll try to have a half dozen questions or so ahead of time or more if we gather more, and then from there it'll, it tends to kind of flow like as they he answers something, someone else might have a question that that prompts, or I might have a question that that prompts. Um, there are only a handful of us, so you know we can all feel free to ask him questions. Uh, and it'll just be uh, kind of informal talking about our thoughts uh, now that the book is done. All right. So with that, let's uh, let's make that true. Let's make the book done. So all right. Um, so the learning objectives I pulled out for this chapter are um, that we're going to be able to use ours built-in and packaged help systems to learn. Um, so that's the help, but also things that expand the help. Um, we're gonna be able to read about our use cases and developments. Um, and I'll have some discussion there about things that people find helpful. Uh, we <laughs> hopefully we'll be able to get help online. Um, I have an opinion about how this can help work out in one case for R, but uh, there are other options there. Uh, we're gonna talk about learning from books and tutorials. That's something that obviously we know how to do because we're actively doing that right now. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about um, teaching in order to learn. All right, so to get started, um, just as a quick overview, and then I'm going to dive into most of these top topics a little bit more detailed. Um, there's multiple levels of help in R. I, uh, like I, I knew about these, but I didn't actually, I, I had never used help.search or help. Um, directly, which are what the question mark and double question mark are abbreviations for. And there are some options in there. So we're going to talk about those in later slides. So there's the question question, where you can just kind of search for any search for a keyword, you search for a topic, and it goes through different parts. We'll talk about that in detail. Um, there's this function apropos that uh, I don't have a special slide for this, because it's kind of it's just used inside of these things for the most part. But it is interesting that you can use it to kind of find places in, uh, find objects within packages and within your um, your environment. Um, you can use browse vignettes or you can just kind of navigate there if you're using uh, our studio. Uh, you can use the single question mark with a function name uh, or the function named help with a the name of a function, which will you know pull up the manual for that function. Um, can read source code. We're going to talk a little bit about that. And then you can use, he talks about, or they talk about swirl. Um, and then I also am going to talk a little bit about the more recent uh, LearnR package. All right. So <laughs> something interesting, by the way, because I had titles of help and help.search with a period, I never did trace exactly why, but it was making the, the R markdown break. And so I want to uh, figure out exactly what was happening there and report a bug. Um, but that's why this is help, <laughs> the word dot search, because uh, our markdown thought help and help dot search were the same heading and being very strange. But anyway, um, I did not know about all this stuff you could do to kind of supercharge question mark, question mark. I've used question mark, question mark many times or just type something in the um, field in our studio. Um, but there are fields that you can like, uh, you, you know, you can say, well, I know it's somewhere in this package that they talk about this topic. And then it'll, so if you get that package argument, it'll just look in those packages. Um, you can use ap the apropos argument to uh, search topics and titles separate from pattern. And I guess to back up, there's pattern is the main thing. It's just, you know, a word or phrase or something that you're searching for. Then there's fields that you can tell it exactly where to search. And then apropos, you can basically say, okay, but also separately search the topics and title for this other word. 
Um, you can tell it to ignore a case or not. By default, it does ignore a case, but you can tell it not to. Um, I have had many times when I'm like, no, I don't want all these other weird capitalization versions of this thing. I was looking for this one. Oh, you can just tell it, okay, yeah, ignore case or don't ignore case. Um, again, you can give it the package. You can give it the library that that, pa that package or set of packages um, are in. Um, let's see, what else? I, I called out that there's the keyword um, to search the keywords field, uh, which um, I don't see it in my, uh, oh, there it is, up at, uh, apropos. What is, is specifically to search in topics field and help. So you can, you know, kind of break down specifically where you want to look for different things. Um, there's this a grep function that tells you basically um, how fuzzy to be in the search. Um, I've had it sometimes where again, I'm like, no, I know what I'm searching for. Don't show me this other word that's kind of close. I want exactly this word. It's somewhere in the, all the help. So. That was uh, interesting. And then um, you can tell it what types to search through, uh, whether just the help or vignettes and or demos. Um, again, this is one of those things where I'm like, oh, this is like one of the most basic things in R. And I didn't realize that it had all these options. Um, but you know, you'll, you'll end up using it kind of accidentally just through the UI in our studio. But uh, learning about all these options was really helpful. Does anyone have any um, thoughts on that? Give me a second. All right. So next up, this we're kind of going from like most general to uh, most specific as we go through here. So the next most general um, is the is using browse vignettes. So you can um, specifically like open up a vignette within a package. A vignette is like a kind of a use case in a package generally, or an article is the other word that is sometimes used, where it's not help about one specific function or set of functions. It's like how to actually use a package, usually how to use it to solve some type of problem. Um, so that function, there's not a lot to say. It just, it does what it does. Uh, but thinking about that function, it led me to um, dig in a little bit and find that there's this tools get vignette info function that is a nice convenient way to um, get yourself a data frame of um, everything, like all the vignettes that are in all of your packages. Um, and so this can, you know, if you're looking for uh, something specific, th this is an another way to search, to try to find, okay, where did I read, or where did I see that vignette that was about X, what package was that in? Um, this might help you find that. So I thought that was pretty cool. Right. Uh, then um, again, the question mark is the same as the function help. Uh, that's where you're, it says topic, but really um, generally you're, you're gonna be searching for like a function or maybe a data object, something from a package generally uh, with help. Um, it has some specific arguments. Uh, the help type text HTML or PDF uh, lets you, you know, specify what you're you want to look in. Um, this one wasn't as cool, I think, as uh, the help dot uh, search, but still, uh, it is a package or a function that has some specific arguments. All right, and then the next level is actually digging into the source code. Um, he did point out the F two. Uh, function function key F2 in RStudio, you can just put that on the name of a function. And if you hit F2 while you're on the name of a function in RStudio, it loads the definition of that function. Um, if you have it, like if it's something that you have local, it'll jump to the file where it's defined. Or if it's something that's just an installed package, it just like loads a, um, in a window, it loads the, the definition of that function. I have found that very helpful because you can then from whatever you loaded, you know, you can see it then does this thing like, okay, sorry, it's, let's say you're trying to figure out, oh, this other function does something I want. It, I'm writing code, I wanna do the trick that they do. And so you can look at their code and maybe, you know, they call something that sounds like a good tip of, towards what you wanna do. And so you can go to that function and just hit F2 again, it'll load the definition of that function and you can just kind of keep going. Um, to see how things are done. I use that uh, very often. 
Um, also within your own car code, it's super helpful because you can jump around to, uh, I'm working on this thing and I'm calling my own function that I wrote. I want to go add an argument or I want to add a corner case to that function. Just F2 takes you to that definition. Um, related, uh, not every function that is in a package is necessarily uh, exposed to the user, but you can get to them in R with a triple colon. So package name, triple colon, and the name of a function. Um, most of the time, like don't use this, but you can use it to look around. Anything that's uh, not exported might not be there in the next version of the package. And they won't even tell you that it's not there anymore because it's not exported. It's, it's just their internal tooling. So I never like call a function this way um, in anything that you want to still work uh, in a future version or with a future version of the package. But it's a nice way to explore, um, especially if you're looking at something that says, you know, you look at the source and it says use method and then the name of uh, a method. And if you've ever seen that and you're not super familiar with S3, that can be really confusing. But if you do package name, colon, 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 the name of that function that said use method and then dot, it'll show you all the dot functions that it has. And those dots are, you know, if it's um, dot uh, tibble DF, that's what it does for tibbles. Or if it's dot data frame, that's what it, that's the version of that function that's for data frames. Dot list, the version of that function for lists. Um, so that can be a good way to kind of explore and see how different uh, package authors do something that you're interested in doing. Um, he talked a little bit about like exploring things on GitHub. I just wanted to make sure like it's in the notes on how to work with the book clubs, but there's use this create from GitHub, um, which you can use to like make your own copy of a uh, of a package's source. That's useful if you want to uh, quickly set something up to to really dig into the code and maybe play around with making tweaks to the code for your own version or different things like that. And that's a good way to learn. Um, and then, you know, I, I guess I skipped the step of just, you can search it on GitHub. You can read all the code for a lot of packages. Uh, Cran will tell you the uh, source for the packages in a lot of cases, and then you can just go there, kind of explore, um, or actually even the packages tab within our studio gives the link when it's available, the URL for the package. Um, but then also on GitHub, there is this org uh, CRAN. So if you go to just github.com slash CRAN, this is a mirror of every package that's on CRAN. So even if the source isn't on GitHub, you know, the like the real source of the package isn't on GitHub, they, there's a copy of it on uh, in this CRAN organization. And the reason that this is super useful is I've got an example here where I was looking for this expert function from the package rlang. And it's a little uh, hairy up there that that is uh, regex for this. Let me see that I'm looking for, I'm searching this CRAN organization for the start of a line, any number of spaces or colon colon, and then expert. And so that's saying anywhere that this is used, uh, and then I actually also search for a parentheses. So I'm searching for that. You, if you use the slashes, that tells it that this is going to be regex. And then I can see all these different packages where this function is actually used. Because I was for a different book club, just trying to see where do people actually use this pack or this function? What is it for? Um, I do need to dig in and tell it, you no, know, I, I want uh, case specific because that's a different expert, whatever that is. Um, but it's a, it's a way to kind of dig in and see use cases for things. Um, if you're reading a package and you're like, I don't understand how to use this, the help isn't that helpful. Let's see how other people have used this function. And so you can do this to kind of dig in and then you know you can um, click through and it'll take you to that code and you can like dig, dig in and see all the details. Um, this is something I've been trying to get in the habit of doing. I hadn't uh, previously done it much, but it is, it's really cool that it's available. Um, I'm not sure if there is a package that lets you do this, but uh, that is something that I want to look into because it's um, I find it super helpful. Um, anyone have any thoughts, comments, questions on any of that? 
very useful. <laughs> Thank you. Or good. Yes, I agree. I um the that the CRAN mm -hmm. org was pointed out to me, and uh, I just find it really helpful as a way to kind of search for things. Go ahead. Is, is there a way to find GitHub packages which are not on CRAN and generally found on GitHub? Is, is there a way like that? Um, well, so one thing that um, is good to know about is there is um, our universe, so r-universe.dev, which I should have included on here. Um, I don't, so this doesn't do code, right? I don't, I'm not sure what it's searching for there, but it's really useful. Um, let's say you're using this package by, uh, I just see Mark Fairbanks here. So I'm gonna search for Fairbanks and see, okay, he doesn't have any other uh, packages, but you know, he's mentioned or he he wrote, he's a co-author on something or something. Um, or you can like click on his name and see what what he does in these different packages that are tracked through here. Um, so this is a way, it, it's not, I actually don't remember exactly how they build uh, our universe, whether you have to um, submit or not, but um, it's another useful place to search to find, um, find things. So, you know, let's say you're looking for something to, oh, actually tables could be hard, but, well, I'll still do. Like, uh, you know, we can see different things for tables, and we see GT in there. We can see uh, some different things. Um, trying to think of something more exam or more less general. Um, wait. Um, I don't know. What's a word? A nice, good keyword that someone's interested in seeing something about. Uh, well, you know, let's say we wanted to learn all about, we can about penguins. And we can see that there's Palmer penguins and then these other things also mention penguins somewhere in them. And so you can use it to kind of dig in and look for things. Um, so yeah. Is, is uh, it like uh, yeah, generally updated or? Yes, it it's uh, it's automated. I Like I said, I can't remember, I think. Yeah, it's, it's not too difficult. Uh, you can at the user level or the organization level, you need a separate repository universe with simply a packages.json file that contains a pointer to the packages which you want to have included. Okay, uh, that's so, data. That's it. So I do know, uh, like, we didn't specifically submit these packages, this is from my old job. Um, and so they are doing like a scraping of, I think CRAN, um, but they might also have, I'm trying to think if I have anything that's um, like GitHub only. They, yeah, they don't have that yet because there's nothing there. So, um, but yeah, it does, it's, it's automated plus it's easy to add things even if they're not on CRAN. So it's a little bit beyond CRAN. Um, so yeah, this, this is a good place and it's something that I have to learn more about. Frankly, it's one of these that I know it exists. Um, I know that, uh, was it? I think it was our open sci. Uh, their blog recently had a thing about, yeah, oh, no, um, about find, like how uh, our universe works. Um, yeah. <laughs> Here's a, you know, and there's a whole universe or a whole universe, a whole, yeah, whole universe of articles about our universe, um, yeah, how it searches. Um, they also, by the way, uh, it's not in this search, but the, our universe also makes data sets that are in packages um, available through the web that you can like explore the data sets thanks to the new WebR project. Um, which is really cool. So they load the data set and like you can actually search through the data set. Oh, hey, there's my old uh, old company is showing up in the organization. So that's cool. Um, so yeah, that's a uh, that's another option. And then you can also just, you know, you can just search on GitHub without the org, but the CRAN org makes it, um, you know, specifically it's things that are, uh, uh, published our packages, you know, our packages that are published on R, or I mean on CRAN. Um, 
so that makes it helpful. Uh, so if, you know, if you get rid of the in CRAN, uh, yep, you're getting Python examples, you're getting Apple examples. Um, so that does make it a little bit uh, hairier. You probably could uh, like, you know, do a regex search that includes uh, arrow assignment and you <laughs> could be limited to R. You can also tell it to only look in um, R. I think, yeah, there we go, lang R. So uh, in theory, that will work too. Um, I know that the language tagging isn't 100% perfect on GitHub. So that's the only reason that I wouldn't go there first. Um, but that can help to, to find examples. And again, the, the thing I use this for the most is I'm looking at something and you know the documentation has some toy example. I'm like, I think maybe this would work, but it, I don't quite see how you would use it. You then can search on uh, GitHub and see how people use it or how it's used in other packages, things like that. All right. Uh, the next level that I have is uh, Swirl is what he talks about in the book. Um, and then LearnR is the, the newer alternative. It's not exactly the same idea, but it's kind of the same area. So Swirl is a package that has like built-in tutorials for um, learning R. And then it also, it's ex extensible. So you can make your own Swirl tutorials that are interactive and you can like type code and do things. And that's, that's pretty cool. Um, but the package hasn't been updated in three years which is you know, quite a long time in uh, our time. <laughs> so like lots of things have changed in the language. Um, versus LearnR is more recent. Um, it's posits system. So looks up. Um, you know, they updated it just uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, they're, they're making more active or they're working on it more actively um, and it's, uh, something that I, I think I still feel like it's kind of up and coming. Um, I'm interested to see if people use it more. Um, it, if in, uh, newer versions of our studio, there's a tutorials tab or a tutorial tab up at the top, right? Um, it's hard for me to switch to the, that view right now, or I would show you, but, um, where it just has a list of learn our, like built in learn our tutorials. Um, and they are like, they're fully interactive tutorials. You can type R code in them and they'll tell you whether that's the correct R code. Um, and it, you know, you can see the output, it does different things like that. There is a, a whole set of uh, examples on the LearnR website. So um, there are their built, built in ones. Um, there are some demos that they have of just how LearnR works. So they're like kind of meta, meta tutorials, uh, tutorials about the LearnR tutorial system. And then they have this uh, community showcase and they have instructions on, um, you can suggest your own if you see some, but they have just some examples of how these have been used. I will note that this is a very short list. Um, after LearnR, I know uh, that that group is actually active on R4DS. It's the Apper Mapper group. Um, there are a handful of others. This Learn Tidy Models, I was trying to show everybody this. And when I went to build it, just like I looked at it earlier, worked fine. Looked at it just before the meeting and it wouldn't load. Um, and so um, I'm not sure, like we can look at the GitHub, but the actual tutorial is something, um, you run this learn our run tutorial. I will, or sorry, this one right here. I'm gonna try that one more time. Well, I've got you everybody, but I am guessing it will throw a weird error. I actually wonder if maybe Zoom is, interfering with the port where, that it's trying to talk to or something. Yeah, error in open connection. Uh, HTTP error 404, which should be, you know, page not found. So I don't know, something's not working now, so I can't show you the tutorial. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting. It's like a full interactive tutorial. Um, it can like give you some examples and then ask questions, give you more examples, ask questions. Um, this is something that I wanna play with more myself. Uh, I think LearnR has a lot of potential to be really useful, you know, build it into our book clubs or um, add some things from a, as like uh, just teaching resources on R4DS. So I want to play with that. Um, and I also want to see it more in 
packages. Um, this LearnR available tutorials, once you have LearnR installed, you can run that and uh, anything, uh, you know, any packages you have that have LearnR tutorials, they get like registered with LearnR and so it can show you uh, the different ones that it can see that you have. Um, I can't remember if that has any interesting arguments. Uh, it does not. You can give it a specific package to look in. That's the only other argument within that, but um, if you don't give it a package, it just loads them all. Um, so yeah, that's something that I'm kind of watching. Um, it's a couple years old now, but it's slowly becoming a thing, I feel like. Um, I hope it hasn't stalled out uh, because maybe, um, you know, maybe in three years, someone will be saying, well, learn our what used to be the thing, but it hasn't been updated in three years. And here's the new thing. So I don't know. We'll see. Has anyone used uh, Swirl or Learn R for anything? I used Swirl when I first started learning R, and it was okay. Um, it has some just, it was number one, it was fairly outdated, even uh, five, six years ago, whenever that was that I was playing with it. Um, maybe it's been updated since then, but uh, at the time it felt kind of dated, and it was, um, you know, it's here's some interactive things, but there's not uh, any uh, material along with it. It's like it's kind of shallow versus Learn R. You're building like a whole website with the tutorial, and so you can do some nice things when it works. And unfortunately, I can't show you that right now. Um, I, and I, I don't know. I'm curious to see if this will work after I close Zoom again because um, it did work just before I joined the meeting. Um, or if something changed, I don't know what it is. All right. Uh, next up, they, he talks a little bit about um, our journals. Um, something I wanted to point out is that since this book was written, um, package down has become a thing. And so package websites have become really useful. Uh, package down is a, it's a package for building websites for packages. If you ever are writing a package, um, there's use this, use, uh like github action package down or something like that and it just like automatically will build a website for your package if you have your package on github um so highly recommend if you're writing a package do do create the associated website and if you're using a package you go to the website sometimes there are things in the articles uh for the package on site that aren't in the vignettes so yeah uh within a package on site by default, there's like a section called articles, and that would just be the vignettes of the package. But you can also have additional things there. Let's say you have examples that um, reference a package that isn't on CRAN. Well, you wouldn't be able to have that example on CRAN, um, but you can have that example in your package down site. So sometimes people have these extra articles on the package down site, or if it's like um, kind of extra interactive or it does things that might break on CRAN. Um, they do those in, on the articles on package down. They also like can organize the help nicely. So here, let me load up um, the Arlang site. Like it has tabs that are, these are different sections for different like use cases of the Arlang package. These are all like, uh, vignettes that are in the package, but they just reference or organize it more nicely on the package down site. Um, likewise, they have the reference, and instead of it just being a big alphabetical list of every um, function, they break it down into these sections of, you know, there's the section on tidy evaluation, the tech section on function arguments, and there are subsections within that. Um, similarly, if you go to dplyr, uh, there's a dplyr package on site, it has like a how to get started. Um, this is one of the vignette dplyr to iron RMD. Um, they also have a bunch of different uh, articles. And if you see, you know, more articles, that's a good sign that probably, um, actually, I think this ends up being in this case, it is all the ones that are in the package. Uh, but again, they have the reference where it's broken down by section. So, you know, let's say you want to just read about the built in data sets, it, they're all grouped together on the package down site. So uh, that's really helpful. And it's not, it wasn't a thing 
when this back book came out. Um, they also, he talks about the um, core R manuals, but uh, I just recently learned that Posit has taken all of those core R manuals and reformatted them in Quarto. And so like writing our extens extensions is the how to write a package uh, book. And it's just, it's nice and clean and pretty. It's easier to read. And so uh, I really appreciate that they have done this because otherwise the like base version of it is, uh, trying to find the, um, oh, it's not there. Um, yeah, official manual. So um, yeah, so th this is ready in our extensions, the original. Um, uh, where do I have this? There we go. So yeah, this is the original version versus, you know, this is the the fancy Quarto version. It's just much nicer to, to work with. Um, this is just, you know, one continuous web page. It looks like a web page that was made in 1993. Um, and so I really like that they have done that. Um, I don't know how much of how much work this was or if it was just ingesting and reformatting, but um, really helpful or really handy. Um, there are also journals, uh, the, the R journal. Um, I don't have the links here, but they're in the book that there are um, uh, the Journal of Statistical Software and the R journal. We've thought about doing a book club that's like a journal club. Um, so this same style, either meeting weekly or monthly, someone would present an article every week and maybe the book club would do an issue of the R journal over the course of you know, a few months or whatever. Um, so watch for that. We'll, we'll probably do something like that because I like the idea of keeping up to date that way. Or um, you know, I just need to get in the habit of maybe setting aside some time every week to look through those. But um, there's a lot of interesting stuff there to see like use cases. It's kind of interesting, like the different parts of the R universe. Like I think the um, the open source community is really good about having um, websites. And so you'll see packaged on sites that are really well done and put together and uh, organized. And then, you know, a lot of the more research uh, academic side of R will be much more heavily represented in the journals. Um, because that's more like normalized within academia. So uh, looking at all these different places, you can learn different things about uh, R. Um, well, I didn't mention our universe here, but he mentions um, the uh, uh, R, I don't remember the name of the site. There's an R, R documentation uh, website. RDRR is like the more uh, up-to-date, open version of a free online versions of all the documentation of packages. And so uh, a lot of times if you search for something in R, an RDRR site will come up. And uh, I don't have pop-up blockers on for this, but uh, it'll do, well, yeah, let's just do Gaussian. And it's, oop, I didn't, <laughs> it pretended I had that. Um, and so, yeah, it's going to show, like, these are all the different um, Packages and also, by the way, on GitHub and CRAN and Bioconductor, and I'm not sure what all else, that it's the d documentation of packages. So it's the stuff that would show up uh, down in or in your R help console. Um, so that's handy. It's ad supported, but it's free. So that's that's what happens. And if you have a pop up blocker on, it, it will block that. Again, our universe, that's a place to learn. You know, you can see the documentation or see different packages. You can see data sets. You can see lots of things about packages. Uh, our bloggers uh, republishes um, blog posts about R. And so it's a way to find different blog posts um, that uh, you know, are introducing new things in R. Uh, the R OpenSci blog, I've been, you know, I loaded that up earlier that it's, it tends to have um, just interesting info, a lot about um, both like specifically diving into different packages, but then it'll tell you, it'll be about, it'll have blogs about some use case of, uh, or something to know when you're um, working on a package or different things that are happening um, within kind of the R world. 
Um, so that's useful. And I don't know, does anyone have any other online, um, you know, this family, this kind of idea of resources that you would bring up? Um, we also have bookdown.org, which uh, oh, yeah. presents uh, a list of books. Oh, and also um, uh, the big book of R. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I should have included that here that uh, Oscar Barufa uh, like gathers, he has a submission process and it just, it's gathering all the different um, books about R and it's like little blurbs about them. So this is really helpful, I find, for searching because it has, you know, a whole paragraph about the books. But yeah, there's um, it's down.org. Oops. <laughs> this is a random book that I was looking at. Um, but yeah, so yeah, bookdown.org is a nice uh, a way to find books that are written in Bookdown. Um, and that's funny that this is here because that's Robin Lovelace, who is the other author of the book we are reading. So um, yeah, I, that's a good call. I, I should add that. Um, I'm gonna make a quick note to myself to add um, add bookdown.org and big book of R. Um, just so that anyone else looking at this in the future can have those links handy. Um, and that both of those are a good transition over, oh, sorry, to this one. So I'm going to come back to the other slide, but there are book clubs. Um, currently, as of uh, when I made these the other day, um, let's see, we don't have any new ones, I don't think, in the last few days. So I think this is still accurate, but there are 20. I have books and quotes there, quotes there because we have a couple of clubs who are reading uh, like documentation. Um, I'm in one right now that's reading the 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 package on site of Arlang, you know, cover to cover, so to speak. Um, we and then we have 24 different cohorts of of those 20 books. Um, right now, we have 85 YouTube playlists of. Uh, past books. And um, as of, again, this is definitely higher now, but when I looked at it, it was uh, 1337 videos of, uh, you know, various book clubs. Um, and just watch the book club announce and book club asterisk, all the different book club channels on our Slack, if you want to join a book club. Um, or you can go to book club requests and there's a form in there if you want to submit something that you would like to read. Uh, we do, we weren't, um strict about this at first but now i i'm fairly strict or completely strict that the book has to be available free online um other than that we don't have any restrictions but or i haven't found any other restrictions basically i approve the books to make sure it's not going to get us in trouble to have a book club for them that they're, it's not something where they're saying oh you know we'll sue anyone who has a book club or something uh but um the reason for the free, I mean, there are two reasons. One, it's to avoid any issues of people in the club sharing, uh, you know, PDFs of the books in ways that could get us in trouble. Um, and then um, also because, you know, not everyone who wants to take part can buy the book, the physical version of the book. So I, I like to keep it open that way. Um, so we do... Um, there was a question of, have you ever thought of doing SEO of our FreeDS channel? Uh, nope. Um, it's all word of mouth so far. Um, I have thought about doing, so because we're on the free Slack plan, our history disappears into the ether every 90 days. That can be good. So there are some benefits to that, that um, if you are just learning R and you ask what you would later feel like is a stupid question, um, that's fine to do because it'll be gone and no one will know. And so I kind of like that fact that it just disappears into the ether. If you don't want your boss in a year to know that you didn't know how to do something, it's fine, whatever, it'll go away. Um, but I have thought about, uh, like it, there's the terms of service of Slack, make it clear that you do own the data. They just hold it for you and you have to pay for them to show you that data which means that I could start archiving our data um, 
And I might start doing that. If I do, I will announce that because the whole, your, the thing you said goes away would stop. Oh, but yeah, SEO on the YouTube. Um, again, not really like it's an, it is announced on various social media. Um, I don't know. I might think about doing that because we do have a lot of videos now. It's, uh, I've tried to do a little bit to make it easier to kind of navigate to, to find the next and previous video and things like that, but um, not fully. Um, one of these days, I'll probably do a little bit more heavy on that, uh, see what makes it come up higher on YouTube and see what um, what is helpful. Like, I do know that we have a surprising number of people who are in our book clubs purely on YouTube but they watch every week. Um, and uh, like all of our videos, they don't all get, get views or high views all the way through, but it's, I think on average, every video gets around 100 views in its first week, um, which is kind of surprising to me. Um, but yeah, so we, we have all that. Um, that is available. Again, if you have any other books you want to read, uh, submit it in that form and it'll probably get approved. And then if we can find five people who want to read it, we create a, a book club or five people who want to read it at the same time, and then we'll create a book club. Um, all right. But to go back, um, there's also, uh, he has a section on online help. Um, he talks a lot about Stack Overflow, which is, you know, it's still always a, an option and a good option, but I put it at the bottom because I think everything above this, you're gonna get, uh, you're, you're often gonna get friendlier responses. Now, if you're not able to get the response, I'll say the search, like searching Stack Overflow, that's great. That's su super useful. And I highly recommend doing that. Asking questions, I think R4DS is a friendlier place to ask questions than Stack Overflow. And you'll probably get an answer pretty much as fast, if not faster. Um, there is Posit Community. AKA our studio community. That's another place that like, if um, if you have questions about, especially like a tidyverse package or a tidy models package, something like that, asking on the posit community uh, will get you an, a good answer. Usually there is an R discord. Um, I'm not super active on there, but uh, I know it exists. Um, there's also the R stats hashtag on Mastodon, LinkedIn, Twitter, I think technically on, um, post and whatever other social media things have uh, come into existence in the last year or become somewhat popular in the last year. Um, those are all good ways to find things. I, I, and then I have a link at the top of this. If you haven't, um, he talks about reproducible examples. I think since the book came out, the Reprex package came into existence, which helps you produce reproducible examples. Um, it's really helpful. It, it does things like it make, you know, it stops you from referring to a variable that's in your environment, but you don't tell anyone what that variable is um, because then people can't reproduce your problem and therefore can't tell if they have fixed it, um, which is the whole purpose of a reproducible example is it lets the person working on it actually try and see, oh, I think this will fix it, but give me an example so I can see if it, if uh, my version works different than your version. Um, so yeah, Reprex is a super helpful package for that. It does have a um, an option for posting to Slack, but it actually is um, a little imperfect about it. Um, there is also uh, a package that I've helped with that we are in the midst of updating. Um, it's So there's, uh, Slack calls is the core package. Uh, it's only on GitHub right now. And then there's um, Slack Reprex that uh, is in desperate need of an update, but it'll get that soon. And when it does, that is really helpful for just, you can throw a Reprex directly into R4DS basically, or any other Slack, but especially R4DS. Um, and then my plan once I get that one updated is uh, to basically probably make kind of a UI into R4DS that lets you, uh, anyway, we'll see that once that comes, but the goal is to make it a little bit easier to connect your RStudio to R4DS to find and um, get help. Um, 
yeah, anyone else have any other thoughts, places to find help? Anything? Um, obviously, you know, we're all in here because of our for ds So um, that is definitely my preferred way. We do it. We have a dashboard that we use to monitor all the questions that are posted in the help channels. Um, we've fallen off a little bit and we're not as perfect about it as we used to be. And I, I need to recruit some more mentors to get up there because um, we try to keep that list uh, as close to empty as we can. And so it shows all the questions that haven't been answered. And we try to empty that out every or every day, every hour. Um, so if, uh, I guess on that note, if you are, um, uh, it, uh, actually that's a good transition into, <laughs> I forgot, I, I have a, a link to it even. So teaching, the best way to, to learn, in my opinion, um, I mean, yeah, once you get to a certain uh, point, is to teach. If you have something that you're trying to, um, to learn, uh, you know, write a blog post or a nice simple one is answer questions on R4DS. Uh, you can simply like go to the, one of the channels, like um, you know, help explore Wrangle if you're pretty good at Tidyverse, um, or you can go to this mentor dash and make sure it loads before I hop over, yeah. Um, this will ask you to log in with Slack and then it uses that to actually hit uh, the Slack API and see which questions are uh, unanswered. So yeah, we have 32 right now that are uh, unanswered. I tend to come in here and look at, for these ones that have, um, you know, like a lot of replies to, to see if we can get these cleaned out. Uh, but anyway, so this is a way that you can kind of explore, find things you could look for. There's an export excerpt of the question, or you can search by channel. There are lots of uh, enhancements I want to make to this, but this is the base baseline. Um, so yeah, if you're trying to learn something, you know, let's say I'm trying to learn about um, something oops, about dealing with categories. And um, it's like, oh, okay, someone is asking about categories. So let me go read their question. And then I will figure out how to answer that. And that'll help me learn about this thing that they're trying to, to do. Um, a lot of times, you can also see if they just have a, a reply already, which, um, yes. So <laughs> they have a not helpful reply that I am just going to remove because it doesn't uh, do anything. If they are not the last reply and there is this um, question more info, it'll remove it from our dashboard. And that's what's going on here. Um, or that's what should be going on here. They never came back. So Tan said, hey, 13 days ago, can you give us a little bit, can you give us a reference basically? Um, and they never came back. Uh, but you know, there might be something else that is much more helpful um, to you for whatever you're trying to learn. And so I'm having an issue rendering some uh, PDF in Quarto. And so maybe that's something that you have just figured out or you've kind of, you figured out part of it, but you want to see some corner cases. And so you can find examples um, I do plan, you know, as part of that thing of uh, maybe archiving things to kind of expand this to where you could also see past ones and how were they answered in the past. Um, and so uh, while you're helping, maybe find some ones that, um, you know, someone answered it in a different way. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's an available option. Um, you can, you know, sign up for, within a book club to lead a discussion. That's a great way to learn. You know, if there's a chapter, a lot of times people will be like, oh, I know all about that, the content of that chapter. I'll lead that discussion. And no, that's the worst way to do it. It's, I don't know anything about that, uh, that topic and I want to know more. That's the ones you should lead because then you'll learn a whole lot. Like me doing this one where it's about teaching. Um, that's what I do. So uh, this wasn't the best one for me to lead. Um, but yeah, find something that you just want to know and then sign up to, to lead the discussion because then you have to read the chapter well enough to explain it to other people and you will learn the material so much better. Um, similarly, you know, you can write a blog. There are lots of options in R about how to write a blog. Um, I don't have an example linked here, but there are lots of um, like getting started tutorials, people blogging about blogging. Um, I would recommend finding one that uses Quarto at this point because that's the newest thing and you don't want to have to redo your blog right after you set it up. But there are various options. You can use like GitHub pages or you can use uh, Netlify. There are a few, uh, you can use Quarto.pub to host it. And there are free options that you can just get it up and running pretty much um, almost instantly. 
Um, you can go through GitHub and, or, you know, while you're working on something, if you read documentation and there's a typo or something is confusing, um, if you're going to take the time to figure it out, submit a pull request to help other people uh, who are doing it in the future. So writing uh, package documentation, that's something that's almost always welcome in open source packages. Um, and it's something that suffers from, um, what do they call it? It's the, the curse of expertise or the curse of knowledge that the person who wrote a function is kind of the worst person to write documentation for that function because they know how to use it. And so they don't think of the things that are confusing, especially the longer you've been working on the function, it, it's not confusing anymore. So you don't have to tell people about that weird corner case. That's obvious, except it's not to anyone else. And so um, that's it's really good that if you only are learning how to write something, like if you're reading the documentation of something and you find it confusing, that means that's the documentation's problem, not yours. Uh, once you figure it out, you should submit a fix for that documentation. Um, and then other levels, you know, you can write a package about something. Like uh, if there's something that you kind of want to, or ha again, have kind of figured out how to do, but you want to understand it more completely, um, you can read the R packages book and then write a package. Um, and that way that forces you to find all the corner cases or people will come to you with corner cases because they'll submit issues and you, oh crap, I didn't think of that. And so you'll learn all the things. You write a book. Uh, that's something that's um, like fairly easy, relatively speaking, in the R world because of things like uh, Bookdown and Quarto. Um, there's the R uh, series with uh, CRC Press, who they had a webinar uh, a couple months ago about writing a book. And um, I'm doing that now. So I'm writing a book about working with APIs from R. So um, I'll tell you know how I how I feel about this in a year, but right now I think it's a, a good option. Um, so yeah, there are lots of ways, but the general idea, you know, um, help out. Like if you if you uh, like can get to know someone who is teaching a workshop, and sometimes they need uh, TAs for those workshops. Um, Last year, I was lucky enough that I helped TA the Tidy Models workshop at our studio comp. Um, and therefore, I learned a whole bunch of stuff about Tidy Models because I was answering questions and be like, huh, I don't know the answer to that question. Let me go find or let me go uh, find the answer to that. And then, you know, it's sit down in my laptop and figure out how the heck to do it. And actually, in um, one case from that, we ended up with a uh, submitting a bug report because the person was asking something that didn't work right. Uh, and that's why they had the question is they had stumbled on something that was broken in the package. So anyway, um, all the, you know, all those options, finding ways to teach it, uh, someone at work it, who maybe is a little bit more junior or just hasn't done some thing in R, like, uh, my old job, we had a weekly, um, lunch and learn where one of us would talk about how to do something in R, basically. Um, or sometimes we would discuss uh, journal papers related to what we did or you know, blog posts or new packages or whatever, but we would just um, explain something that we had figured out. Uh, and so doing that taught me a ton uh, because you know every few weeks I would be the one in charge of explaining how to do something. Um, and so therefore I had to really understand it because that's the thing. If you're going to teach, like you don't, you don't have to be an expert in something to talk about it. Uh, Jenny Bryan just had a, a, a whatever a toot on Mastodon that I really liked. That was all about how um, don't feel like you have to be the world's foremost expert in something in order to give a talk on it. Um, if there is something that you have used to solve a problem, you can give a talk on that thing and. In, again, in giving that talk, in writing that talk, you'll learn a lot because um, you you kind of formalize your thought processes about it. So I guess that's another one that should be on here is uh, submit abstracts to conferences and give talks. Um, yeah, so we are at the hour and I also actually have to run. So that's that's it. That's the whole, that's the book. Um, I will see everybody next week. Uh, like I said, I'll, I'll get a thing up in the channel for us to submit questions or just there are only a handful of us. I might just make a thread on the on Slack for us to submit questions and just uh, try.
try to come up with some things that you're curious to hear uh, Colin's thoughts about. He is also, he runs a company that does like our consulting. And so if you have kind of uh, questions about like Shiny or um, about uh, our consulting, that would be another option of things that he can uh, be helpful about. I'll also pull up, uh, he has a couple of recent talks that you might want to ask about whatever, just anything kind of Colin Gillespie related, <laughs> feel free to bring it up and we will, um, we'll have an hour to, to pick his brain um, and see if he has any thoughts. I, you know, one thing I want to know is just like, what, what's his biggest thing that isn't in the book <laughs> that, you know, has come out since then. What is the first thing he would add to a new version of the book? So um, things like that. And um, I will see everyone next week. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. See you. Oh. See you.